Hi, welcome to the Core Futures talk. Axel Lopez and, and me, Bernard Pina, we are engineers of the Carla team and we are going to talk about about synchronous mode, how it works and what is the fixed delta time. Also about the concept of world snapshot, some na new concept, and also some app extensions that Axel will will explain. Uh, related to waypoints and new function, new classes like junction and landmark. So let's start with the synchronous and asynchronous mode. The asynchronous mode is the default one. So is the where we have the server that it has the main loop to create as as many frames as he can, as fast as he can also and the clients will wait for the frames to come but uh, the server will not wait for the client so the client needs to make fast calculations because the frames will will come one after the other and sometimes when the client needs to, to make complex calculations this is not a good way of doing because the client can skip frames and for that we have the synchronous mode this one where one of the clients, for example the client 2, is the one who has the main loop for the creation of the map, the frames, and the server is just waiting for the tick that the client needs to call, and then when the, call, the client calls the tick, the server will uh, simulate one frame, and then wait again. Also the other clients are waiting for the frames, and only one client is the one in charge of doing the tick. So this is very useful if the client too needs to make some slow calculations, one frame by one frame. So the server will wait. But for this mode to work properly, we need to define the fixed delta time. This is the time that the server will simulate in each frame, because the server will wait for undetermined time so he cannot know how much time to take for the frame so we have to define so by default 20 frames we are using this this fixed delta time that means that 50 milliseconds okay so how we do this in source we need to connect to the server and get the wall and then from the wall we have the method get settings that will get will give us the current settings and the synchronous mode is a boolean if it's true or we set as true then we are in synchronous mode otherwise in a synchronous mode also if we set the synchronous mode we have to define the fixed delta seconds for example here for 20 frames per second and then we apply the settings from this time, because we are in synchronous mode, one of the clients will need to make the wall tick. And the other clients, if there are more, just wait for the tick. Okay, the future work is to work on a truly multi-client synchronous mode, because right now only one client is in charge of make the tick for the server but uh, we need uh, that the server waits for all the clients to do the tick so that is something we are working on now we are going to see the wall snapshot the wall snapshot is like a still capture of the of the scene of the edge frame and we have some properties like the id of the new frame the frame count and also sometimes the lapsed times is the time from the start of the simulation, the delta seconds is the time from the last frame, the previous frame, and platform timestamp is the timestamp from the operating system. And also for all the actors we have in the scene, we have an actor snapshot. An actor snapshot, we have some other properties like the ID of the actor and also some methods to get the position or rotation, the velocity, angular velocity or acceleration. And also we have an state that is an structure that in function of the kind, the type of actor 
we have four actors then the state will have some properties or others so these are the the properties for for example a vehicle we have a control with all the controls that are applied in that frame and also a speed limit if the vehicle has some speed limit appli applied also for the traffic light and if it is the case the traffic light ID and also the state uh, we cannot see also for the walker we have the direction they are moving on the speed also if the jump command is enabled in that frame and for the traffic light we have the sign ID this is the identification that comes from the open drive so we can correlate one with the other also we have the configuration of times for each state the poll index is uh, if the traffic light is inside the group to know which is the, the index inside the group and also we have the state and for the traffic signs we have only the ID from the open drive so in code we can get the wall snapshot for example if we wait for a tick then we will get automatically the wall snapshot but we can get the wall snapshot with this method at any time and also if we are in a callback waiting for on tick then we get the wall snapshot as a parameter and also for the actor snapshot we have two methods in the wall snapshot we have has actor if that actor exists in the wall snapshot and if, the, if that is the case we can use the find to get the actor snapshot of that actor and now uh, Axel will talk about the new API extensions In this part of the presentation I will talk about some of the extensions that have been done to the Python API So I will talk about three topics First about the waypoint stack extensions the new class junction and the new class landmark which is a way to support open drive signals so first of all a quick reminder of what a waypoint is so it represents a directed point in the road so whenever you have a, this particular lane you have a waypoint in, uh, in this location so with, a, with the direction of the, of the traffic in this point this allows to query road information such as road ID, lanes, etc. And uh, the function next is available to you to traverse this, uh, this the, the map in the direction of the traffic, so you can move in this direction. It is an abstraction so that you don't need to worry about the complicated geometry and so on that may be in, a, in, in the open drive file. So to expand upon this, previously you could only use the function next to move through the road so which meant that you could only move forward. Now we have added the possibility to move backwards through the previous function. Similar to next, you can enter the previous in a certain amount, a certain distance and you will get a new waypoint uh, corresponding to that dis the distance you need. Also, we have added some helper functions, uh, next, until lane ends, previous, until late start. These give you a set of these, all these waypoints in a single call, which is you get waypoints until the end of the particular lane or until the start. We have also added the possibility to query to obtain waypoints using open drive information, such as roads ID, lanes ID, etc. Then we have the new class uh, junction, which is uh, the, it represents a, an intersection in the map where uh, lanes uh, split, merge, uh, intersections, etc. So it has some attributes. The first one is the ID of this uh, of the junction, which corresponds to the open drive uh, file. Then there is the bonding box. This is the area that this junction is taking in the in the map, so you can use this to query whether there is an object within, inside, or an obstacle, or another vehicle, etc. 
then we have the function get waypoints which this function returns a pair of waypoints for every lane in the in the in a junction so you have the initial position and the final position of the of the of a particular lane in a junction this allows you to, to guess the connectivity of, of the road so where is every lane connecting to and you can get this uh, junction object using the waypoint so from a particular uh, waypoint that is within a junction this function will give, return you the corresponding object finally we move to the, uh, the new class landmark so this is our way to support open drive signals where it's stop, yield, traffic lights, etc this is a way that to uh, query the open drive signal record and uh, extract this information so the new class landmark has uh, several functions and they are detailed in the documentation and here I provide some of the most important ones the first one is the ID the ID of a landmark corresponds to the signal ID to the ID of the corresponding signal in open drive notice that may, there may be multiple landmarks with the same ID which means that a particular signal is having an effect in different places in more than one road then we have the type which is uh, the, this identifies whether a signal is a stop, a yield or a traffic light etc the underlying type is a string which means that you can use a different country code uh, a custom country code or signal code and you can and this uh, class will still gather this information then it's up to you to detect whether a signal is a stop or whatever type in your in your custom code then we have the transform which is the physical position of uh, all the signal finally we have the lane validities function which this returns a list of all those lanes with which this uh, particular uh, signal is taking an effect in a particular road then we have the how to query for these landmarks, how to obtain them so one way is through the waypoints so from a particular position in the map you can get a waypoint here and search for landmarks within a certain range then for you get a list with all these landmarks that you have found and you can do whatever you need you can look for landmarks uh, in, in for any type or just filtering with a particular type here is this an example of this so you just get a waypoint however you want then uh, search for landmarks within a distance in this case 50 meters and then for the resulting list of landmarks you can search whether it's a stop and then do whatever behavior you want to implement with a stop sign or if you want you can expand this to support signs or whatever to support the yields or whatever other traffic sign that you want Then we have some other functions to obtain the landmarks, such as get all landmarks in the Carla map. This allows you to retrieve all the landmarks that are defined in the Open Drive file. And you can do the same call filtering by type, which means you can get all the all the stops in the map at the, with a single call, or from an ID which means you want to get all the landmarks corresponding to a, a particular uh, traffic sign which is all the places where this uh, signal is taking an effect and finally there is the connection with the simulation so from a landmark so the landmarks uh, represents the open drive uh, signal record and then we want to retrieve the corresponding object in the simulation for instance a traffic light we want to retrieve a traffic light that we have detected through landmarks we want to query its state we need to get the carla actor corresponding to this traffic light 
So with this function get traffic light, you can get this actor and query whether it's green or how long it takes to turn it to red, etc. etc. So this is for my presentation. Thank you.